thank you for inviting me to presenting the data uh, to the Brain Foundation meeting. And uh, I'm presenting the, some of the research data, which not complete, but um, I'm presenting uh, because of the funding was partly through the Brain, Brain Foundation. Also the, from the Joint Foundation, I'm very thankful, thankful for uh, providing the um, funding to conducting, um, conducting this research subject. And also, the, this is not the whole uh, research project. It's a part of it which is uh, available to present. And so the, essentially the reason why I launched this research project with my team is essentially the ASD is a behaviorally defined syndrome unless there is no non-mutation found and it's a very heterogeneous patient population. Then ASD subjects suffer from uh, many different comorbid conditions. And that was seen to be associated with immediate inflammation. But a lot of immune um, abnormalities has been have been reported, but the, what kind of the role that immune abnormalities um, reported um, in the ASD pathogenesis? Not clearly understood, despite the mounting uh, research. So the G study, uh, at least our past research is uh, focused on the innate immune responses, which we see persistently at least a uh, subset of the ASD subject. And the, those changes seem to be persistent. And we hypothesize those are associated with epigenetic changes that is causing the so-called innate immune memory. Um, and those changes are also associated with the COMIT condition. So we, the second hypothesis, actually the main hypothesis tested in that for the such changes are reflected in the um, comorbid, um, clinical, comorbid conditions or some clinical finding, as well as the serum level, the microRNA. That generally act as the second messengers of the immune responses. Okay, so the first part of the we present some of the um, associations we studied between the several um, innate immune parameters that um, associated with, possibly associated with innate immune memory, and then other clinical finding, especially comorbid condition. For this study, we used for the newly recruited ASD patient and the total ASD subject and the non-control subject, demographic age changes, ethnicity was shown this. Essentially, the age are not so different. A little higher level of the female is in the control, and ethnicity is also the predominantly Caucasians. And also for the COVID condition, as uh, everybody as everybody expect, the large number of the ACD subjects manifested the GI symptoms. And the predominantly most of the patient has a history of dietary intervention and with a favorable response. That's what I uh, showed it as a history of NFA. And a fair number of the patient has diagnosed with a seizure disorder, 14%, which is probably the, um, like a pretty much um, corresponding to the previous result. Uh, previous data um, from other, other researchers. And the asthma percentage is probably is a little bit lower than general population. Allergic rhinitis is pretty much uh, in accordance with the frequency of the general population. 
We think that because a、um, few years ago, allergies,、um, there is some, hy- hy- some researchers hypothesized like atopic condition is more common in the ASD patient. We don't see that. And also, we have identified a t r e a t who's a to- little more than 20% of the patient. Diagnosed with specific antibody deficiency or a common variable immunodeficiency. And also, the PANS like symptom is some patients already diagnosed with other physicians as a PANS, or、um, some parents asking about the PANS. Essentially, these are patients we categorized as there is a significant behavior changes.、Um, Following the immune stimuli. Essentially, mostly immune stimuli means microbial infection, but sometimes, like a allergy symptom flare up or a severe、um, gastroenteritis. Then, also,、um, many patients reported have a disturbed sleep. So, the, this is like a、um, We just tested if any kind of the COVID,、uh, the, any difference of the、um, innate immunity parameters with or without presence of the、um, comorbid condition. So, first table is showing if GI symptoms reported to be present. If there are any differences of the monocyte cytokine profiles. And so, surprisingly, most of the abnormal、uh, difference was found with the TNF alpha production. It's like a TNF alpha inhibitors are fairly widely used for the inflammatory bowel disease. So, we are a little surprised. And also, we did some covariance analysis, and the highlighted, like TNA alpha the,、uh, production by Zymozan, stimulated the cultures. Also, TNF alpha solved TNF receptor to ratio in Zymozan stimulated the cultures. Both are、um, affected by ACD severity. And We did also for the tested for the seizure disorders. And this C comorbid condition number is a little higher because for seizure、uh, patients, we tested repeatedly as a r i k e to check for the changes. So essentially, for seizure disorder ASD patients, they tend to have the higher IL1 beta, higher IL1 beta IL10. Uh, ratio and uh, uh, so those I1 beta and sometimes I TNF alpha were parameters implicated with seizure uh, like a、um, neuroinflammation associated seizure disorder. So, therefore, this finding is not that fun,、uh, the, it's not that surprising. But we are very surprised. This parameter is not affected by the other clinical parameters I t- we tested, like、uh, medication use, SSRI,、um, SSRI, and the mood stabilizers, and、uh, ASD severity. So, those two, at least the several and age six, Those kind of the common、um, clinical v a r i a n t didn't.、Uh, didn't Seem to affect the associations between the seizure disorder to those clinical、um, monocytocytokine parameters we tested. And specific antibody deficiencies, again, because of fair number of the patients we had, then again, the major change of the、um, cytokines we found is the IL6, IL10. And a, little, and a little bit i r o n beta. Then, as a highlighted, two highlighted parameters affected by、um, use of the neuroleptics by covariance、um, analysis. 
But the IL-6 is not surprising, and it's actually, it's a lawyer with an uh, ACD subject diagnosed with specific antibody deficiency. And this is consistent with the finding of the CVID patient because IL-6 is implicated with B-cell differentiation. So the CVID or antibody deficiency patient is considered to have the B-cell differentiation defect, they tend to have the lower levels. IL-10 is also tend to be lower, which is uh, when uh, like uh, um, immune systems, uh, especially like a B-cell function, T-cell function is lower, IL-10 products. So this may be consistent with the report with um, reported in the, some CVID patient. Then this is for the pants-like symptoms. Like uh, essentially, we defined this as uh, significant uh, behavioral changes following a microbial infection. This definition might be a little difficult because it uh, might be subjective. And uh, again, we see the significant differences IL-6 levels and IL-1 beta so regular type condition. Uh, regular like cytokines implicated. And IL-6 and only IL-1 beta is affected by the um, ACD severity and seizure disorders as a covariant analysis. So with our finding to our surprise, um, association of the immunoparameters with comorbid conditions seems significantly different in each combo with the conditions. Okay. So, you know, the last, because of that, um, we also checked for the sleep disturbance and the, um, we checked for the association between sleep disturbance and immune parameters. And only sleep disturbance has a significant uh, difference and it's not affected by the other clinical co-variables, um, TGF beta levels. That was very surprising. And it's essentially TGF beta uh, mostly higher in both ACD patients. But if you have a T, um, TGF, I'm sorry, if you have the sleep disturbance reported, they tend to have the little lower TGF beta. So TGF beta is usually like a kind of regulatory cytokines with a suppressive. So when you have a sleep disturbance compared to the non um, as, compared to the ACD subject with, without the sleep disturbance, they may have a little decreased type condition, decreased TGF beta levels. So because of so much difference found, we tested for the, if there is any difference of the, those cyt, uh, monocytocytokine levels uh, in association with ACD severity. And we did find some uh, differences with um, some of the, some of the uh, monocytocytokine profiles, but unlike other comorbid condition, those ACD severity, which we um, obtained from the medical history review and mostly is um, assessed by ADOS, as ADOS evaluation, a lot of, um, you know, uh, more than 50% of the parameters shown the uh, differences uh, depends on the ACD severity. They are often, um, um, like associated or essentially covariant analysis revealed those association, uh, this kind of association is often um, affected by presence of other comorbid condition. So that is uh, somewhat uh, my expectation because ACD severity is uh, um, associated with uh, as a comorbid condition or evaluation per se may be affected by presence of. So this is in the line of our expectation. 
So another、uh, result we are presenting is because、um, there is some differences we found depends on the comorbid、um, condition and some、um, monocyte cytokine profiles. We want to see a little more convenient、um, parameters, which is easily、uh, detectable serum samples. Monocyte cytokine levels, it's a really pain to do that because we have a fair,、uh, fair amount of the blood and we have to purify monocyte with using immuno affinity. So we did that to this end. The, We, this is only one initial 100 samples, and、uh, about uh, uh, 75% is a、um, HD sample. Then we controlled. So these data may change because at least we direct to another 100 sample. So we have more beta. And we,、uh, the result of the percentage of the pants, like all these comorbid conditions, pretty similar. Um, uh, similar to the,、um, the patient population we analyzed、uh, for association between comorbid condition and monocyte cytokine profiles. And when we did that to these、uh, comorbid conditions, at least we did see some differences in some of the select、um, microRNA levels. And these, these microRNA, I forgot to tell,、uh, selected by previous deep sequencing analysis of microRNA, and we selected one appear to be different between ASD and the control subject. And we did, and these levels were the、um, normalized cycle,、uh, PCR cycle threshold、uh, value. So, It's a little confusing, but it's actually lower values means there is a more higher level. And this is normalized by using a beta action as a housekeeping gene. And then this value is a, a cycle threshold subtracting from the cycle,、uh, cycle threshold value of the fibrous ribosomal RNA. So we did that because this is a little more easier to do the statistical analysis. So, the few uh, like, uh, uh, microRNA level shows differences with or without the comorbid condition. So, these are like a kind of similar, especially microRNA 4235P, which is fairly abundant,、uh, at least MIRN standard, is、uh, like a presence of a GI and、uh, then a seizure or a antibody deficiency. Seem to be the show some difference between the with HD subject without these comorbid condition. And the, also for the sleep disturbance and pants, those、um, microRNAs, we did see the difference between HD subject with or without. It's essentially、um, Little different from the, and these、um, microRNA levels are present smaller amount than the one that we show in the patient with GI or epilepsy type.、Okay. So, so, so then we checked for the association between microRNA levels and the cytokine parameters. One of the、uh, things We wanted to see is there is always some high outliners, which is very out. Of, then, when it's bulk, they may not show it, but there is always very low levels, IL,、uh, the very high IL10 or high IL1 beta. And so, we did see the some、uh, these all、uh, microRNA levels. It's a numerically negative association, which means.、Uh, Um, lower number is high, so it's actually a positive association. So we did see the, like,、uh, some of the like,、uh, um, monocyte cytokine levels. And interestingly, these are IL1 beta, IL10, and, and IL1. So and this is a fairly、uh, decent. The sample numbers are small, but a fairly decent.、Um, 
associations we can find. And this analysis, we find some iron beta associated, like a, um, at least linear associations. And also the iron beta R10 ratios, and all, uh, the, we see some um, associations. So this is uh, um, like a summary of our preliminary data. And especially microanalysis are still very preliminary. At least we need another 100 to get a little more beta analysis. So, and I'm sorry, I go back. Okay, and so the, I also wanted to see that like a, uh, sometimes a little beta uh, like association is found when we just anal analyze the data with GI positive or PANS positive. We could see the sleep disorders, but some pronouns are a little too short to do that. Uh, I'm sorry, some pronouns, ACD subject with sleep disturbance is a little too small to do this kind of analysis. So we just did that the GI and the PANS positive ACD because the, we have the, at least more than 50 samples. So the, you can see sometimes uh, like a, uh, only like a association found is a, like a pans positive patient and also the, sometimes the GI positive. When we do that, the every patient all together, we didn't see the uh, less responses. So those data might uh, a little more, and um, I felt encouraging. Because if the patient has like a GI symptom, the pan patient, pan symptom, and then all these like a serum levels, which is maybe a good uh, the indicator, certain cytokine levels, especially iron beta or the as a um, kind of ratio, it's more convincing, uh, or at least it's a much better probability these patients also will see the um, monocyte cytokine difference. So, which means it can be used as a quick marker for the screening for further analysis. So, essentially, the conclusion of the data I presented commit uh, the, as follows comorbid uh, conditions observed in the ACD subject may be associated with changes on monocyte cytokine profile. And some of the changes are not affected by medication use or other comorbid condition we did, um, at least our comorbid covariance analysis. And also, the, like uh, our preliminary data result indicate serum microRNA levels may also be altered by depending on the SD comorbid condition. And the production of certain monocytocytokine levels, such as element, may be negatively associated. Oh, I'm sorry, should be positively associated with serum levels of the uh, select microRNA in a preliminary study. I'm sorry, I thought I corrected it, but this one I didn't correct. Okay, so essentially, it's a positive association we expect. Okay, so this is the end of the, um, my presentation. So, if you have any questions, please uh, ask some questions. I'll, be, I'll, I'll do my best to answer. Okay, well, thank you very much, Harumi. Um, so we have, we, have, we have several questions, which is great. Um, so the first question is, we have, uh, we have seen a few presentations that have talked about the role of IL-17 in autism and behavioral change. Did you see any association between IL-17 or one or more of the ASD comorbid conditions? Um, because uh, IL-17, usually when you purify the, um, you purify the monocyte, purify the monocyte, they don't make much uh, IL-17. So we used uh, like a peripheral blood mononuclear cells for the uh, IL-17 production, then using a different stimuli, obviously. And I don't know, it's close to the innate type IL-17 production, but we used for the in response to like a candida proteins. 
but these are separate set of the uh, data. So, so it's hard to present all together. So I didn't present it. So that's monocyte per se purified. They don't produce too much IL-17. So that's a totally different. That's an innate IL-17A, so. Okay, that's great. Um, then there's another one. Oh, hang on, sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, okay. Based on your research, do you think autistic children who are confirmed PANS case, classic presentation, positive Cunningham panel, absence of strep related lab abnormalities? Okay, do you think that PANS cases uh, be treated like any other PANS cases or should they be specific PANS protocols for those with autism as well? So a very clinical question. Yeah, PANS is difficult because this is just for the PAN definition is post-infectious inflammation. So the, we just, you know, we kind of struggled how to define the PANS-like symptom. So we just, our like a study uh, we defined, there is a repeated like a documentation of the infection or other stress induced uh, the behavior changes. But it's not like a regressing. After the, uh, the, those stimuli is better than kind of going back to the baseline, but it's another stimuli going back. So it's almost like this is a symptoms uh, expected if the trend immunity is, has a role. And those type of the patient, my implication is case by case. I'm very, you know, because I usually check, you know, other genetic component or everything. So that I don't really try the protocol. Honestly speaking, the autism patient shouldn't apply the one size fit all therapy. It's really the precision medicine type condition. That's why I thought it's like a microRNA type, which is much more stable. And also, uh, you told me the plasma cytokine wasn't so helpful. And I did it before, and I agree. It's just for the, like, <laughs> it's just for the plasma cytokine. That's why the, I went to the microRNA, because the most clear data I get was the monocyte cytokine, but that's a really pain to do that. So that's, that's a part of the reason. Yeah, I think it's a precision medicine is really necessary for ACD patient. Okay, and then we, we have one uh, more, sorry, my phone is um, using, I'm using uh, the app on, the, on the, my phone so I can, rather than the screen. Okay, uh, what are your thoughts on Borrelia B and its co-infections impact in some autistic kids' immune system? Yeah, honestly speaking, I really don't see the very good association between the serological data uh, with Borrelia and for the behavioral changes. And a part of the condition is really, if the inflammation persisting, I think the immune system is suppressed. So the patient, because the, what the, we tested only for patient to come to our clinic, which means much more like an immunodeficiency type protocol. And I intentionally did this study because these kind of patients we thought it's much more uh, easier to find the, like more associations and get the better data for the, like, these serum markers. But for the honestly speaking, I don't find very good association, serological data, co-infection. Honestly speaking, I am not so sure it's the, our infectious disease doctors, they don't care much about the serological data of the Borrelia co-infection. That's the many infectious diseases I had, that's their opinion. But I'm not an infectious disease specialist, so the, I'm not sure I can say very confidently. 